she's been on the show before. I've been so impressed with all of the winter drills she's been doing online that I asked her to join us again. And yes, she is. It's Debbie Doniger. And for the folks listening only, you can check this out on YouTube. Deb, what's up? How are you? How are you? I'm golden. I've got a week off, which is nice. Um, but That's good. Um, getting this is my of... teaching day, Mark. I know it's, it's, <laughs> it's a cool setup you got there. Obviously, you're up in the Northeast. So for the folks that didn't listen to you the first time on the show or if they haven't listened to Sirius XM or watched your social media channels and all these things you got going on. Tell us a little bit about you, please. I have been playing golf since I'm seven years old. Um, and, you're 29, and you're 29 now, right? So it's only 20. Totally. <laughs> this is why I love you. Um, played AJGA, played golf at Chapel Hill, uh, turned pro, played amateur golf, turned pro, played mm -hmm. the European tour mainly, tried to play the LPGA, of course, tried to qualify four times. Uh, my teacher growing up and my main mentor is Jim McLean. Mm -hmm. I quit playing. It's been a theme year. I got to stop you real fast because we're doing this recommendations thing and you've got an interesting recommendation for us. And uh, there have been a few guys in a row who've recommended folks that are from the Jim McLean stable of instructors. And, and for me, that's been great because, you know, Jim is, he's such a bright mind for a start, but he's got such a great way of explaining the golf swing and, and making some difficult concepts easily digestible to me i think he was you know look i'm so fortunate to have him as my teacher my whole life so mm -hmm. uh, he was my one and only teacher i may have dabbled with a few lessons with craig shanklin who i'm no i know you know and jim would always know if i if i dabbled but jim was always my teacher he was always at the forefront i thought we were doing video lessons in the early 80s when i was super young um and the way we used video and then what we were looking at. And so his concept, yes, were easily digestible. You're exactly right. Tons of drills. And he himself sought out so many teachers. Um, and that's exactly what I have done post McLean. Mm -hmm. So if it's not, um, I've watched Butch, I've watched Chuck Cook, Randy Smith, um, Gilchrist, um, Gosh, who else? Just a bunch of guys that that I just think are so amazing. Mike Adams has been a huge, huge uh, mentor to me post post mm. McLean, but I worked for him for over twenty five years. Yeah. So I've done a lot after to broaden my horizons in a, in a real way. I think, and it's you know, teaching has been my passion. I've done it for over twenty five plus years now, and um, super fun and. You know, I, I guess what I'm going to show you today is just a culmination of things yeah. that I've found or thought about, but um, there's no no way I'm, I'm still not learning and still not texting Randy um, and Shuffler just won. Yeah, of course. Which yeah. is one of his students. He's the such one. a good teacher. Yeah, no, true. He's, he's been on here as well. Um, legend. I mean, look, he's a Hall of Fame golf instructor, Randy Smith. But the one thing before we dive into the drills, because, yeah, you're right. McLean has got a lot of drills. The one thing I've loved about your drills is they are awesome. And as I've watched you put these out there on social media here over the northeastern winter or the northern winter, I should say, is that these are drills, whether you're man or woman, strong or not strong, athletic or non-athletic, anybody can do. And they're going to benefit you no matter your station in the game. And that's what I appreciated about the stuff you put together. What was that planned? I definitely try and put out content that I may not see. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to be different. And all of us who have been in the game our whole lives, that's hard to find. I try and put out content that's general enough that it can help a lot of people. Um, and you're right. Look, I have a family. I have a boss. I have children. So my content is definitely the last post notwithstanding because I screwed up my drill. <laughs> but um, <laughs> oh, that's on the Instagram reel. There was a blooper. I know. I know. With some I choice know. language from someone. So, uh, so I can't modest. believe I screwed that up. I didn't put whatever. But my <laughs> social media person was like, let's just do it. But, you know, I'm very careful. I, I know who's watching and I hope it helps. Um, you know, there are several peers of our, ours, yeah. including you, who are like, oh, that was actually pretty good. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, thanks. So that makes me happy. Well, I'm a big one. Uh, as I, If I put on my golf instructor hat and I take off the broadcast thing, I, I'm a big one for making a concept or turning a concept, something cerebral into feel. And that's what drills do. And, and drills as a teacher, and I know you'll probably agree, they sort of put our minds at ease because when you've taught the individual and, you, and you're like, okay, go and take 
do this drill. It's like, go and take this medication and you'll be taking steps in the right direction. Um, most folks just go and hit blindly and they don't really make any headway where drills will help them with this, right? Yeah, I think where McLean was really good growing up is he always gave me a game plan. And, and that's what I do with my students too. And they always included X amount of reps X amount of drills. So I grew up doing drills. Mm -hmm. I teach my students drills. I know there's a lot of um, uh, people out there that may not subscribe to drills and they may want to um, foster an implementation of a swing change or a motor pattern differently, which I'm totally into and subscribe to. I, I guess it would be N of one. So what the individual needs will do. Um, but listen, you know, I've grown up in this game and played it at a very high level and have always done drills and seals. So um, I believe in them. But if it's not for a certain student, then then there are other ways to get the job done. And it might even be in the gym. Actually, yeah. I have a student who would just better in the gym than mm -hmm. on the range, which is kind of interesting. Well, Adam Schreiber subscribes to that. And I need to love you know, him yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, um, But let's do this because I, you and I need to double team the listeners now and say to them, look, don't be shy of drills because you, they are productive. They are purpose driven learning. And then mm -hmm. I want to build on this too. And I'd love your take training aids. I, 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 I can't encounter so many golfers and here of late, because now I'm a volunteer assistant coach for a ladies high school golf team, the young lady golfer is so loath to have a training aid on the putting green or on the driving range because they feel conspicuous. What's your take on that? I love training aids. If they work yeah, and they help. Mm -hmm. um, Will Wu, I think you've had him on. Have you had Will Wu on? No. Mm -mm. We will. He's a motor learning specialist. He's helped me a little bit in terms of creating practice schedules um, with training aids. So it, it is helpful for your listeners out there or anybody watching um, that, again, student specific, but that there are ratios between training aid to then grabbing a ball. You know, if you want to start with a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, that seems to um, help the motor pattern better. I'm not saying to, that's a hundred percent for everybody. I, I need you to say that again. You've just hit me with two to one or three to one ratio. So two practice swings, two drills to one hit. Uh, I watch most golfers. You watch most golfers. Golfers listening to this, you should be rapid feeling, fire. Yeah, you know, it's just hit, 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 and then you've filled time just getting cardiovascular. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really interesting, and even like one of the backswing drills I'm going to give you with the with the putter, it's. You know, I'll show you do it three times and then do it normally. You don't, on the other hand though, I will say, you know, I, I was a student of the game and, and had to work harder than maybe somebody else for whatever reason. So if McLean told me to hit um, 50 drivers with a draw on a designated area on the range, um, I did that. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't exactly the ratios I'm speaking of. So again, I do think it's very student specific. It's why you got good. And here, I mean, I shouldn't timestamp this podcast because it lives in the internet, but here uh, over the Genesis open weekend in 2022, we just, there was an interview with Tiger pre tournament and he spoke about digging out of the dirt and practice and practice and hitting thousands of balls and stuff. Now, if you watch Tiger hit, it's not just rapid fire. He'll hit, He'll assess, he'll make a few practice swings. He's always working on something. And then it's like the hit of the golf shot is a reaction to what he did pre to a pre uh, pre shot. And also um, when I watched Tiger, when I was doing some stuff on the tour, the slow motion swings, when he warmed up, yeah. unbelievable, mm -hmm. like the amount of wherewithal to sit there and do a slow motion swing with, he went through his bag. Well, I, you said, you know, you felt like you had to do drills more than most. I hear rather, and when you said, talk about yourself and you talk about Tiger and I, I try and transcribe this to the viewer and the listener. I'm like, it's just the discipline of making sure you're doing the correct thing. Because when fatigue sets in or who knows, emotion or what, you know, wind change, anything, club change, you know, stuff starts changing. We play a mercurial game. And so, the drill, the training aid, whatever the case might be, the, the discipline practice swing gets you in the right mindset for, for work that is going to gain traction and improve you. Yeah. 
like it's annoying. I mean, you and I probably, did you ever do the pump drill? Well, all the time. Uh, yeah, I've, I've the got time. that on my social media because I, it, it works with everybody, no matter your station in the game. So, you know, if McLean told me to do that for 20 minutes, I would do it. But I mean, I wanted to play the tour, you know? Yeah. So if we have like a hundred, well, a 90 shooter that you want to give them the pump drill, maybe it's only 10 because that's all you got. You got a half hour on the range because the person works. So you have to give game plans in order to the student, you know, for the student in front of you, of course. But for you and me, yeah. I mean, we wanted to play. Well, to that game plan real fast. Um, before we get into the drills, and there are five of them, folks, we, uh, Debbie has put together stuff from the top of the backswing through impact into the follow through. But for the folks listening to this, this is not he or she or you listening to have to go to the range. You could do this at home for 10 minutes a day, right? And you totally. are doing yourself favors, correct? Totally. Awesome, cool. Totally. Right, I'm a let's... big fan of at night home practice. Lots of fun in my house, Mark. <laughs> sure. Well, the husband is a golf professional as well. My at home practice includes red wine and cheese. Uh, what, 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 what. <laughs> nice. You're okay. like Mike then, Adams. Yeah. It's golf swing oil. Right. <clears throat> let's start. Uh, you've got a putter in the hand there, I believe it is, or you were swinging something around. We're about to grab okay. one. Again, yep, folks can watch this on YouTube or at my website. Um, search Debbie Doniger uh, for the folks not listening. Now, I'll do my best radio to describe what you're doing. You, okay. this is a, you say this is a great drill for the top of the backswing. And you have decided to use your putter. So talk us through this, please. So most putter grips have a flat spot right on the, right on the front yeah. of the putter. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, you know, I, I have used it, one, because I think it gives a good feel. And I don't see it very often. That's why I'm doing it with you guys. Right. Um, having said that, w obviously, you and I have been out on tour. There, there are plenty of guys with putter grips on clubs doing it differently. And extension on a wedge. And, and Stenson yeah, has little. that putter grip turned inward. So if you yep. imagine the flat edge of the putter grip, it's turned inward a quarter turn. And that helps him to you know, do the right stuff through impact. Um, exactly. So I want it. So to your point, you know, if you have a teacher or coach out there and you hear this drill or you see this drill on YouTube, you know, everybody's hands are a little bit different on the club. So you can talk to your coach. You may tweak the, um, the putter grip on an actual club yeah. to work on certain things, but let's keep this general, like my tips on Instagram. All right. So your thumbs go down the shaft. And when you go up to the top of your swing, if you have an open club face, yeah. you're going to feel that the flat spot of the club of the putter grip is pointing straight down to the Directly ground. Mm -hmm. So with the flat spot, it's when you twist your hands and you twist the flat spot a little more up to the sky. And then That's you'll see the putter. The hmm. Yeah, you'll see the putter face. But it gives you it's it's, you know, I think it's called constraint training. So this will help you feel open to more shut. Yeah. Open to shut. Well, well, look, I actually want to take this a little further because I love this and I'm sure you do this where you swing into the top of the backswing and you try and get the sense for, okay, where's the flat spot located? Uh, Correct. And you can uh, feel it, right? Mm -hmm. And you can close your eyes and you can twist it. And then going back to our ratios, let's say you do up to the top, you do three times face open, actually do it the wrong way, okay. actually do what you're trying to fix. Mm -hmm. So let's say you do three times open face, and then you do, let's say you do six times twisting the flat spot up to the sky. So, so there's a different ratio. So for folks and, listening, I'm looking at Debbie down the line over here from the, the, the target line view, and right. she swings to the top, and then the, the cup or the flat spot down that has that lead wrist kind of um, in extension a little bit. And then she goes into the opposite. So she looks a little bit like Dustin Johnson or Brooks Kepko or Colin Marikawa, Jordan Spieth, even where she's twisted that wrist situation. So the flat spot's looking a bit more to the sky. I, I want to add to yeah. this. This looks like it could be cool. Like you talked about the pump drill, because I see you doing it now. And I she, know. And she swung halfway down and halfway down, you could give yourself a club face check with that. With that a hundred percent. And I, I, that's what I believe I see a lot on tour when they put it on. Uh, a real golf club or even their putter because you can work on delivery and mm -hmm. where your wrists, your hands, the club face. It's really easy to see a putter if it's open, squared, a little closed. So you can take it down to halfway down if you're working on that with your teacher too. And then when you take a normal club, 
it does feel different. I mean, you can feel like you would just, your brain should say, oh, I have to twist that flat spot. So it feels mm -hmm. a little bit different at the top. Hey, uh, the putter face, I think, is genius as well, because most folks don't think of the dimensions of the club face. They look down at the club and they see the top line largely. They never see the leading edge, and that's where the golf ball interacts. So the that's a good is, point. So, so the putter is emblematic of that. And then the thing I love about this too is the putter, the way it's weighted, you'll get a different sense entirely because if you've got the wrist in extension or cupped, that toe I'm sure feels really heavy, doesn't it? Yeah, it hangs down. You're right. And also I do think um, people get a little screwed up because of the loft on your club faces too. Mm -hmm. So to your point, not a lot of loft on your putter. So you can definitely check your club face. I want to I want to put a bow on the super drill that you can do anywhere. A uh, mirror would be even more helpful so you can sort of see where you are in space. Uh, a lot of folks, they hit bad shots and then they suddenly go, well, I'm not turning my shoulders or uh, I'm not moving my hips or I'm changing my spine angle. These are all important. But the situation of the wrist and the club face, that's how you make magic. Am, am I correct here? Yeah. Well, your hands are connected to the club. You and I both know that's your only connection to the club. And, and usually the poor golfer does not have really good club face control, which includes hitting the center of the club, how the arms, forearms, wrists work in the golf swing. The better your arms and hands, the better your body should move. I would say, generally speaking, that's, that's a pretty good thing to take to the bank if you're a higher handicap. And Maybe even lower handicap too. And the folks too, because it takes a really educated golfer to go from a slightly cupped, weaker club face position to square that off correctly wrist wise. Because most folks from that open position would just throw the wrists and the hands at the thing. And all of a sudden their buddies will be like, Hey Joe, you flipping. And then poor Joe's trying to fix his flip, but the golf ball is still going crooked. Yeah. You don't have enough time. Yeah. Um, unless you're really, really, really talented. And you have really good hand eye, but that's only going to last X amount of hours on the course. Hours. If hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, a, what a wonderful start. Put a grip at the top of the backswing. You can do it anywhere. It's easy to understand. Yeah, it's fun. Get, and it's different. Just yeah. try it. And you yeah. get the you get instant feel um, and, yeah. and awareness. For me, for me, a drill just stimulates physical awareness, not just mental awareness. And and it gets you the feel of what you gotta what you gotta get going on. Right, the next one, this is for transition. Uh, this, I've not seen you do. I'm intrigued. Uh, you're going to use a, uh, a band, one of those training uh, TheraBand kind of things. Show us what you're yeah. doing for the transition. So this this actually is on my, my Instagram. Mm -hmm. So if you have a buddy you play with, they can hold um, a flex band on the far side of you, underneath right. your trail foot, so my right foot, I have a huge basket of balls just holding down the band. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and you, you need some pull on it, so some, you know, some tautness to the band and put it underneath your right foot. So, okay. depending on what you're working on in transition, um, I can give a few ideas from just Perfect. students that I see all day long, but up to the top, you know, a lot of times arms and hands are super slow in the transition. So if you keep that band a little bit, if you keep your right foot a little bit lower to the ground and the band keeps its tautness and you want to work on your arm and hand speed mm -hmm. versus popping up off the band or yeah. your arms and hands are super slow, that can help you. It can help you because I'm pulling on the band that way. It can also help give you a little more lateral shift the other way. Yeah, um, which you can describe. You, it also won't let you run away from the golf club too much because I see a lot of golfers who, who get the lesson that they've got to get to their front side. And then the next thing, they're off wildly in that direction. And now, you know, with ground reaction forces being a watchwords on the internet, folks are creating all sorts of ground reaction forces, but they're covering the golf course in errant golf shots. <laughs> huh? Well, I think for me also, it just helps, you know, I don't, I don't play that much or hit that many balls but it definitely helps sync up my arms and my body a little bit and so yeah. just let your arms come down give it and then you can let the band go after either the pass through correct yeah. correct it also helps you know the higher handicap if you need to slow down the body and get the arms and hands to swing past you a little bit and get a little bit more of a a draw or a hook feel but i love that 
it's mm-hmm. good for the better player too to sync everything up. Two things here spring to mind. First off, most golfers are of the faulty assumption that they need to be slower with their hands in transition and then everything collapses. Where the good players, that's where the handle of the club does its most acceleration because it's actually slowing down a whisker through impact. It's crazy how many people uh, don't know that. Yeah. Um, just the average golfer. I totally agree with you. And their arm and hand speed is so slow and it really should be super fast right in here. Like Mm -hmm. you really, you need some strength. Um, I have all my junior golfers in the gym because you got to have some, some arm, shoulder, back strength, arm, you know, hand strength to get these arms moving. Yeah. Along those lines, I want to illustrate something because you doing the, the pump drill we've talked about and you've got the pressure on, you're keeping the pressure in the band. Uh, what I'm seeing that folks might miss if they're watching and the folks listening are unaware of this. When you swing in your arms down, you're not spinning out with your body pivot either. Your, your, your no. torso, your back, you know, there is engagement over there and your arms are getting back in front of your pivot. And that's yep. the best place to be consistent through contact. Yep. And that band, like I said, since it's pulling you towards away from the target, yep, yeah, away from the target, you're, you're, lateral shift or a little bit of the pelvis moving forward um should happen because you're the band's going the other way i want to so give there's this, like a lot of good things that happen with this well i want to give this one a little bit of a i don't know legitimization from ernie else hall yep. of famer you know he's one of the great swingers of a golf club of all time yep loves him he has said to me on many occasions, he goes, I strike the ball the best when I keep my right heel grounded for as long as I can in transition. Interesting. Hmm. And that's exactly what this band, because you've got the band under your foot, that's basically along the ground. Love him for that. Hmm. So there's, so if you look at my Instagram, and it, this has been out there a little bit where they, uh, people will stand on the, um, let's say a gap wedge underneath the right heel. Mm -hmm. to keep the foot lower to the ground but you can also along the lines of what you just said you can stand on a club underneath your left or my my lead foot so you got a lofted wedge under your lead foot now and it's pointing across your right shin basically yeah my right shin near my right knee and it's the same idea keep it there just a smidge longer so you're not spinning and popping out yeah and um it's a really good drill because the opposite would be something like this on youtube Mm -hmm. it's the same thing it's controlling your right side a little bit better and for the left helps sync up the left is the the opposite obviously and underneath the trail foot really yeah it's a good drill yeah well i love it i I think there's so much that can be learned you would like that one (laughs) well i would and and here's the thing why and i want you to put a bow on this exercise I've used the term awareness and most golfers, when they practice, they are not aware. They, Mm -hmm. you ask them, what did you feel? And if they hit a bad shot, they're like, it felt bad. And I said, you hit a good, (laughs) they hit a good shot. And they're like, what did it feel like? Oh, it felt good. I'm like, what felt good? You you feel the strike. (laughs) Seriously. You've seen this as a decorated instructor where when you're doing this, all of a sudden it directs your attention somewhere. It directs your attention to a place that is really a cornerstone of hitting good shots because every great golfer you speak to the old timers, not necessarily the new ones, they'll talk to you about the transition, how important it is, you know, where it comes down, how it comes down and you showing you the speed that it can come down at. Yeah. Both are really good drills. I totally agree with you. No, people don't know what they feel. (laughs) They don't. (laughs) It felt good. Okay. Um, Impact, the moment of truth. Uh, you said you would likely go to the putter again and you've got the flat grip so you can be aware of how your wrists have, have twisted to square up the face or do you have some? I'm going to switch it up. Yeah, I'm going to switch it up. Um, you know, again, with, with McLean being my, my main mentor, we, we did a lot of position training. I totally understand that there are some teachers that don't like to teach positions. Um, and again, I think it's student dependent. Mm-hmm. but oftentimes I'll ask students to say, just show me what impact looks like. I know it's a point in time. I get it, but it does help some players to know what impact should feel like. And a lot of times, majority, they have no clue. Mm-hmm. So I have a mobility stick here. I am not paid by mobility stick, but it can bend. 
So yeah. I have them get into um, an impact position where the lead hand is on top of the mobility right. stick and my trail hand is under. Underneath. So it's, it's a palm, split grip. It's palm to the sky with a trail hand, palm to the ground with a lead hand. And so here's the cool thing, which I think you're going to like. When you get into impact, you push down with the right and pull up with the left. So there is, you can feel like the, the handle of your golf club, therefore, is pushing or pulling up while your lead, uh, trail side is pushing down on the mobility stick. Uh -huh. And then you get your body into the proper impact position. And I understand that most people don't have a mobility stick. Yeah. So... I think oh, we can do it. Yeah. Well, well, we got. So you're just using an alignment rod now for for for. The yeah, because it does have flex in it, and just stick the alignment rod so it's got some uh, resistance in the ground or a mat. I mean, it's freezing, or it's not freezing today, but it's winter, mm -hmm. and you can sort of feel the same thing where you can get some bend in that shaft. So you push down and pull up, and most people, you know, don't even don't really know that that happens. And then from there, you, you could do some drag drills or um you know impact and you can let that tip of the the alignment rod drag along and then push up through the shot so there's a lot you could do with with impact this is a good one uh, this is a good yeah. one and, and and something that the the viewers will see the listeners as debbie has got the lead hand and it's pulling up and the trail hands pushing down she's yep. unwinding her middle too but with that but that stick the alignment rod in this case now sort of looking down your target line, Debbie. So it doesn't really allow you to spin out of that thing too violently either. So you've really got to activate to use a Tiger Woods term to, to, to get that club moving now around you. Yep. That's a good point. So I'm doing it the target line so you guys can see. So it's not like you're not, not, not flip, using not your anything. body. Yeah. Right. And then you, when you drag the tip to your point, if you want it to be a little more from inside the target line, you can drag the tip that way. Yeah. If you need to feel a little more down the line or a little more outside, you could do it that way. So you can control where this tip is dragging a little bit and then understand that, you know, you use your pelvis and glutes and you push up through the shot. Debbie, you, you know what, for the folks on this, listening to this, that are trying to swing left, you know, get the handle moving left and stuff. What you're doing there with that tip of the alignment right on the ground, you better be really appropriate with it, with where the hands are traveling to watch that tip turn back to the left because so many folks would travel outward too long, wouldn't you think? Yes, totally, totally. Hey, um, I, 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 I like this. I like this tip. It works with a lot of my students. That's why I'm bringing it up. Well, it's great for feel and it's great for learning. I, I, while you were describing and you lost your earpiece, I, re I reached behind me and I've got this. I don't know if you can see it, folks. It's yeah. it, it's it's Kevin Chapel, and he talked about feels. This was in a golf uh, magazine a ways back. And he described it. I'll try and get folks to have a look at my, right? He described the impact feel as if you're pulling a cork out of a wine bottle. And he's yep. holding. I thought the, it was great. Brilliant. And he's holding the corkscrew with the left hand. And what he's doing there is exactly what kind of the feeling that you're showing with your alignment rod or your mobility. Yep. Stuff. And then you do it. Oh, my God. That probably sounded horrible. And then you do it with a, with a club. Yeah. So you can feel the, the handle push up a little bit while you're turning back to the left mm, lovely stuff very different than like this stuff yeah super and you're gonna really for folks who want to compress the ball better what debbie's talking about over there i think will really do you some favors all right so we we go from this abstract of left side pulling up right side pushing down you know compression and pressure on the shaft to your post impact drill which is a right arm throwing the club or your trail arm throwing the club um, so now we've gone from powerful to let go, which is cool. So why don't you show us this drill? Yeah, you know, okay, some people do really study golf um, that we get, Mark, when, we, when I teach people. And sometimes the handle's just, it's too much handle drag. They don't understand the release of the wrist or the right arm. So a lot of times, I'm going to throw this club right into the freaking ice. So a lot <laughs> of times I get them to throw clubs, literally. And that's on my Instagram too. Um, and that's a home run because there is a let go at some point in your golf swing. There's, you got to stop the pull and, and you got to let go. So throwing clubs and then you can, 
do that with your right arm also, you know, but I'm not going to throw this club, but right arm. Oh. And then a lot of times, even though you're having one of my mentors on tomorrow, you said, um, I, I <laughs> do this. like this. I do like this left arm. So you take your, your club with your lead arm. So I'm a righty. So my left arm and you, you come to about halfway down or three quarters of the way down and you take your trail hand or my right hand and you put your hand on the shaft, splayed fingers, mm -hmm. and you push the club a little bit. And then you let go with your, you let go with your right hand. And so there's some freedom in the left arm where the left arm comes flying off your body. So I do think sometimes that left arm gets overly connected and that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. I, I understand all kinds of drills with, with arms connection and I do it myself. But sometimes I see too much connection where there has to be some sort of let go with the left arm mm -hmm. where it's coming off your body and then you get some nice full release with your arms. A couple things. Uh, first off, when you were throwing the clubs, I noticed how you would take a step with your lead foot and then go ahead and swing and release. Um, you, would, you would recommend this anyway because if a person just throwing a standing still, they're not dynamic enough to really propel this thing one with some force and two in the right direction. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, you have to use it. It should feel like a nice throwing motion that everybody's used to if they throw clubs with or throw balls or any kind of sports. So I'll throw a few more for your listeners. Mm -hmm. And there's there's variations to this drill. So if you get really good at this here, I, I wasn't going to do this with you, but if you get really good with this, you then thump the ground and throw the club. Oh, okay. So you so land are, where the club edge should land and then you let yeah, it Yeah, there are steps to this. Mm -hmm. So I just did it there. And then you actually hit a ball and throw the club. Cool. And then, yeah, then, then you're splitting really cool. it into right hand only or trail hand and then lead hand only. I actually enjoyed the lead hand uh, motion. I know that Mike Adams. You were I know he's not going to like okay. that. So I just threw the club with my right hand. Yeah. But, you know, to each his own. The lead hand, though, and you were doing it, you weren't you letting were doing the it. club go. Um, yeah, Mike the... would say to me, um, show me. Like, Mike's a voracious learner, like the yeah. rest of, um, like, Chuck Cook, all of them. They they love to learn. So Mike, Mike's all about just show me. But a lot of times, I, when, they, when you spin out and the left arm comes across the body, um, you also get a lot of speed this way too. You do. So I love arm and hand speed for a higher handicap. So I'm tr always trying to, to well, get I love, that in there. I love the two-sided element to this because you have two hands on a club and most golfers yeah. have got one side dominating the other. And that lefty one there, you weren't letting the club go, but I saw the club, it swing freely. I saw it release. I saw it almost hold totally. your leading elbow. And it's in totally. a place where the golfers can feel you know, because when you release the club, the way or the energy to the club, it takes over from your pivot and it almost finishes. Yeah, for you. sure. And for I'm sure. seeing that happen. Yep. I'm just doing it so you guys can see on YouTube. And then you would put both hands on. And you can hear I think the switch of the some, club too. Yeah, I think there's just some freedom there with the arms and hands. And and McLean, we would always train both sides of the body. And, you know, all the other teachers I, I watch. So... Look, if somebody relates to the left side and, and that worked, then, then we're good to go. Lovely. Okay. So the post-impact, you can do it one arm, two arms, whatever the case might be, throw clubs. Um, and I loved your statement. You some, at some stage need to, need to stop the pull and let go. So many golfers have been hoodwinked by the shaft <laughs> lean thing at impact. And most of the I golfers know. listening to this don't have speed enough to lean the shaft and elevate the golf ball sufficiently. You no, to pull and let it go. I love that. No, and also everybody's wrists are different, grips are different. So mm -hmm. some people have more shaft lean than others. Some can't, and so I think you just have to be a very smart um, teacher. Yeah. Uh, to know that what impact should look like for that student. One more thing about this throwing deal, because a lot of the throwing is also the letting go of the hand, and yeah. and I've done this with people when. I guess they just aren't aware enough and they like throw, but they let go with a, they let go of the club with their hand too soon and hits the ground in front of them or they let go too early and it hurtles out to the right hand side. If they're a right hander, 
too well, late goes way left. Too, yeah, and if you hang on too late, it goes way left. So, so a lot of Horrible. the release of the hands is also part of this exercise, right? Right. So good caveat. So if you're practicing this and you're going to throw clubs in your backyard or into a net, just try and throw it pretty straight unless you're trying to throw it out to the right. Or I've had, I've had students, they really do. They, they almost let go too late and then yeah. it's going up high and over, over their way over to the left. It's a disaster, but it shows them they're hanging on for too long. It shows them that you got to have some let go in your swing. And the folks that hang on to that thing too long are typically the folks that hit them wide right at most of the time, sort of blocked slices and that sort of deal, don't you think? Yep, too much pull. All right. All right, the final one, uh, we are all the way from the top of the backswing down into the follow through with that, but the finishing of it all. And, and the one thing, folks, if you go to Debbie's Instagram, we'll share the handle in a minute. Every swing she makes looks very stylish. It's always well balanced. Um, it's impressive stuff. And you could thank McLean well, <laughs> or my me, hours on the range. See, well, to me, it's as an instructor, it's max of someone who's worked on swinging into balance and not just swinging into balance, someone who's worked on getting the speed at the base of the swing and then from there slowing down appropriately so you can hit that balanced follow through. And now, again, we're living in the era of power off the tee, especially with the men. And folks are bouncing around all over the show. But even, <laughs> you know, to me, Rory is the best at swinging fast and swinging into balance. But most folks listening to this don't swing into balance. Um, so please help them with your follow through draw. So sometimes if the follow through is clean, yeah. a lot of things happened appropriately. The, the, um, the transition was well done. Um, all your forces were pretty much in line. So in order for some students to not have to think too much, if you can get to a good finish, it's possible, generally speaking, that a lot of good things happen. Yeah. So um, to take all the technical jargon out of a lesson, I'll pretend the camera's a wall. Okay. So I did this on my Instagram too. So you just do a body drill, but you have to, be right up against that wall when you finish the golf swing. So you're not, um, Head first your upper body's or, yeah. not, not leading and your lower body hasn't gone too far out of the way. So you want to, well, that's pretty good. So I'm in the camera there. You want to get up against the wall at the exact same time. You know, a lot of, a lot of folks that I teach have all kinds of body dysfunction. So to mm -hmm. think that we can, do some stuff that tour players are doing or then 1% or all my D1 golfers, it's just not going to happen. So it's okay to have everything get up to that wall at the same time. Just because you hear they're separating their lower from their upper does not mean that the average player can do that. And setting up to the wall, uh, I'm assuming it's lead foot with the outside of the lead foot against the baseboard of the wall, right? And then, yes. and then, you're, then you're swinging up to a place where you uh, essentially, there's snow outside, look at that. Um, I told you. Essentially, not just turning into the wall, but as you were demonstrating, and this is what I love, there's that upward sense as well, because the follow through has an element of vertical. It certainly has the rotation. Now, Debbie's standing yep. up beside the so wall, I'm gonna, next to the right, wall. I'm going to stand up and you just go right to here. So it'll be obvious if I bang into the wall with my head or my yeah. lower body's leading too much. You just want to, almost be like stiff as a board like you're doing a plank position and you know you've got a light coming up out of your chest and you're up and you're tall you're taller than when you started you've you're up that would add some vertical verticals to your golf swing so i think doing that with a wall is just a nice image and, and then when you add your arms and hands in to get to like a pro like finish you know pretty much i would think that you would be in good shape yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to up the ante a little bit with this one. Um, yeah. I'm envisioning now, like you've now bent down to look into the camera. Now I'm envisioning, we talked about impact where there's some forward, you know, spine tilts and stuff that you could set up to the wall in your tilts and from there turn upwards. So you're turning from uh, where you're over the ball compressing to up into the follow through too. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. then cross your arms and then just go. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, of course. Because 
I, I just I just came out of a lesson you were giving lessons earlier where my lesson was one of those guys who turned way too level, didn't rotate on the appropriate spine angle. And so as a result, he'd have to straighten his arms to hit the thing. The wrist would give way. First thing that his buddies would say to him was like, you're lifting your head and you're flipping your wrists. I'm like, if you didn't, you wouldn't hit the golf ball. <laughs> so this one would be perfect for him if he's in his positions and you rotate up and into the wall where you, you were talking about that searchlight with the searchlights on the ball, but then up and high into the wall. I love that. Yeah, like right here. And you just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. You want to be, you know, stiff as a board. You're like you and me doing a plank in the gym. Yeah. yeah. I think like a lot of things get cleaned up if you can get to a nice finish. Just as a little bonus, I've kept you for a long time, but you were talking about the impact with a putter, with a flat front edge. I, I want you to go there some because, you, you know, impact is so important. And you said it earlier that, you know, wrists and arms and hands, they, they essentially make shots. The body supports making shots. So, describe what you're doing there with a putter grip trying to make contact you know i i'll i'll hedge this again if somebody comes in late to this to this podcast or this youtube video there's you can move when you're building a club or ask your teacher again the putter grip like you and i said there are ways to move it to accommodate the grip What's that's necessary? appropriate for you yes so i i'm going to caveat it that way but again both thumbs are on the flat spot so when you go to impact you can feel if i mean you should be able to feel if you have a little bit of breakdown mm -hmm. where the flat spot is pointing and usually if you want just a little more shuffling or you're working on that or working on a lead wrist you can feel the flat spot turn down yeah which i'm doing there the and turn, then you can the see the loft on the putter is turning down you know like i said there's a lot of people that get a little bit confused um because of the gosh i don't have my thing that points out of the club but yeah you're oh, magnetic you get a lot of use it all the yeah time. you got yep you get yeah. so confused by the loft of the club that that adds a three-dimensional angle to the golf club so um having that putter face like you said because there's so little loft on it it might well, help de-loft the club yeah well look I'll put I'll put a bow on this observation, and I, I'm glad you did that, and I'm glad you referenced how, with a flat spot of the putter, it makes you aware of, of the torque and the twist, the, how you got to twist that shaft to square the face up, um, yeah. and then you you you've re referenced fantastic instructors, Chuck Cook, uh, um, Jim McLean, uh, there was a list was endless. Yeah, Eddie Ran, Marin. Uh, Butch, Randy, yeah. Bill Harmon. I love him. He's amazing. Well, well, Eddie Marin's the little pro, legendary instructor. He talked all the time about swing the handle of the club because as the handle swings and as you twist on it like you were with that putter, whether it's the top, halfway down, through contact, that's how the club face is going to move. And as the club face moves, so the golf ball travels. I don't care how much you keep your head down. Yep, totally, totally. Debbie, you've been a star. You are a star. Um, please share for the folks the social media handles and other places they can find you. Mainly it's at Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Doniger, D-O-N-I-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. That's mainly where I am on Instagram. Do you got a website at all or not? Yeah, DebbieDoniger.com. Right. I teach up in Bedford, New York at Glen Arbor. Rob Labritz, my director of golf, just qualified for the senior tour. So he's yeah. playing today. So mm -hmm. we'll see how he does. So you know, we're, we're in the middle of West. Well, we're not merely in the middle of Westchester County, but I grew up in Connecticut. So I'm, I'm kind of home. Awesome. Appreciate your time. I appreciate all the insights. Keep up the great work, Debbie. It's, it's good stuff. And, and, and Thanks, you, Mark. you're making a big difference in the world. This, this I know for certain. I'm trying and I really appreciate your support always. You're welcome. Keep it up. How's it? 